Hey guys, it's Chris. From people who just plain refused to sell to others who had to make adjustments in order to keep living in their houses, here are 11 stubborn homeowners who refused to move. Number 11. Edith Macefield Edith Macefield has a very interesting story regarding the house she refused to leave mainly because that story was turned into a classic movie by Pixar in the form of Up. See, I told you it's very interesting. You see, Edith owned her home in an area of Seattle, Ballard to be precise, and that area was getting brought up by big businesses. She was seeing all the old homes being taken down and shiny new ones being constructed in their place. She decided to refuse every single offer made to her in regard to selling her home. She was even offered $1 million at one point in time, but she refused the money. Eventually, since she still wouldn't sell the house, big businesses literally had to build around her plot of land, which became a shopping mall. So imagine that visual as you're going to one of those shops and seeing a very simple house on front of it just standing there. Anyway, as noted, after the story of what Edith did got out, her story was turned into Up which is hailed as one of the most touching Pixar stories ever made, and the character of Carl was based off Edith. When the movie came out, a bunch of balloons were put on the house in honor of what it did. The biggest irony of this story is that Edith actually became friends with the chief contractor of the mall, and when all was said and done, she passed away at the age of 87 and left the house to him in the will. Number 10. Mary Cook As is to be expected somewhat in places like New York, the landscape and architecture changes with the times, and as such, during the early 1900s, a large stretch of New York in the Upper West Side was known for having comfortable homes, and to that end, a woman by the name of Mary Cook would eventually go and get one of these houses, alongside her husband, Ferdinand. By 1915, Ferdinand had sadly passed away, and Mary Cook remained in the house with her children. But to her surprise and her dismay, the neighborhood that she had grown to love was slowly being torn down. The neighboring houses were being bought out, and massive apartment complexes and other buildings were being put up in their stead. Despite seeing what was becoming of the area, Mary Cook refused to sell her home. Offers continued to come in for Mary to sell, but she refused. And the longer she refused, the more changes the area of New York underwent. So much so that by the end of it all, her home was quite literally sandwiched between two massive constructs of houses. Though Mary Cook passed away in 1941, her house remains still wedged between two massive buildings as a reminder of the past and how New York used to look. Number 9. The Toronto Duplex Out there in the world right now are plenty of odd and unique houses that are just begging to be stared at. And one such place is a duplex that is not only more than meets the eye, you'll think your eyes are actually playing tricks on you. You see, one day a person came along and wanted to buy the duplex that resided in Toronto. One resident was all for it, but the other was not and refused to sell. Very typical stuff if you think about it. That was a problem for the deal overall though, but the property buyers made a unique solution to the problem. They proposed and the residents agreed to cut the building in half in a very literal sense and seal up the middle so the other duplex owner could still live there. Yet the business people would still get their building and yeah, they agreed to do just that. The house or halfway house as it's being referred to by some now still remains in Toronto at 54 and one half St. Patrick Street. Many don't know the full history of the home and thus they think it's a joke. It's also now an internet meme due to a picture of the house being posted on Reddit. And now for number nine, but first be sure to tell me about your house in the comments below and also be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. Number eight, Vera Koking. The case of Vera Koking is a curious one mainly in that not only did she get offers to sell her house from one major casino owner, she also got an offer from a future president. This all started back in 1961, when Vera Koking and her husband bought a home at 127 South Columbia Place in Atlantic City for about $20,000. This place was meant to be a summer home for them. But then, in the 1970s, Penthouse Magazine publisher Bob Gukoni offered Koking $1 million to get the house and the property it was on so he could make a grand casino. Koking refused. So Gukoni had to try and build a casino around the house, which he did, 
until he ran out of money to fund the project, and for the next 20 years, the steelwork of the ill-fated casino remained surrounding Koking's house. Then, in 1997, Donald Trump decided to buy up various places in Atlantic City and build various things on them, including the lot that Koking's house was on. The casino had been torn down at this point. She again refused to sell. And so, with help from the city, Trump got her house condemned and only offered her about $250,000 to get out of it. But Ko King fought back. She fought against the laws of eminent domain. And as a result, she prevailed and she got to keep her house. Eventually, in 2010, Ko King moved out of the house and went to San Francisco to be near her family. She transferred the rights of the house to her daughter who tried to bank in on the fame of her mother by selling it for $5 million on the market. In 2014, it sold for about 10% of that at $583,000. The house was finally torn down later that year. Number 7. The Highway Apartment If you were to head to the city of Wenling in China, you're going to see something very odd in one of the roads there. Mainly, you're going to see an apartment that is well and truly surrounded by a highway. This all occurred when the government decided to try and buy the apartment in order to make a highway that would go to a nearby Wenling railway station. The government offered many of the residents of this apartment building money in order to leave, and many of them accepted. However, the remaining couple refused, as they didn't feel the money was worth them leaving. And because of this, the government had to build around the apartment as they weren't going to risk hurting the people by trying to tear it down. Though the couple would eventually move out for various reasons, the house remained and was known as the Nail House, a reference to how certain nails in wood can be nearly impossible to get out because of how embedded they are. The house is seen as a symbol by the people of the area in regard to how you need to fight against big developers at times just to keep your house. Number 6. Randall Acker in the case of most people, they don't want to live near universities because of the noise and business that goes on there. But for one homeowner in Oregon, though, he didn't mind. And he didn't care who was next door, for he wasn't leaving his home for anything. His name was Randall Acker, and he owned a small but lovely Victorian home in Portland that is now surrounded by a school's dorm. When a buyer came around to try and get his property, he promptly refused, which was his right to do. The problem at the time, though, was that he lived in Portland, Oregon and the people that were trying to buy his property were building something for a school, a residence hall for a university to be exact. Yet because he refused to move, they kind of had to improvise. They went and made the residence hall around the plot of land. So if you head to the Portland State University residence hall, you'll see a small house right next to it. Acker has been very vocal about his situation and even went to court to fight eminent domain because he's an attorney as it turns out, and he successfully fought off the claims. He even used up as an inspiration for his struggle with those trying to bring his house down. Number 5. New Xuan Zhen and Zhang Zhan Yun had a true New Xuan Zhen and Zhang Zhan Yun had a true battle in China to try and save their homes, and their fortitude was tested in ways that many never even have to think about. To put it basically, they were in the way of progress in the province of China, and they refused to move their houses that were connected. So the Chinese construction company dug around them and started making massive skyscrapers. Along the way, they cut off many basic amenities that the two needed to live. But they stayed where they were, no matter what they did. And those companies did a lot. As if that wasn't enough, gangsters of the area came in and threatened them repeatedly, trying to tear down the house illegally so construction could continue. The couple fended for themselves and battled for years to keep their homes. The reason that they would not leave in the first place wasn't just that they wanted to keep their homes, but that they didn't accept the compensation that was offered to them to leave. Number 4. Austin Spriggs You might think that holding out for a home is a good idea, and for many it can be when you're fighting for a legacy or something else, but sometimes it doesn't work out like you would hope, such as with the case of Austin Spriggs. You see, he owned a little property in Washington, D.C. And when people came to buy it, he refused to sell. The reason they wanted to buy it was because the entire area was getting remade in a grander image, and his place was the last holdout. He was so stubborn that he actually attempted to wait out the buyers in order to keep a hold on his property, which, weirdly, he didn't live in. The offers even got as high as $2 million all for a tiny piece of property. To further stick it to them, he went from using the house he had for his own little business to trying to make a pizzeria, but it never opened thanks to the banks threatening foreclosure. And this is where the twist comes in. 
You see, because he didn't maintain the property after that, it was later determined that he had to sell it. He asked for $1.5 million for the property, but by the end of the deal, he only got $750,000. And that's a pittance compared to the $2 million he was once offered. But I mean, it's still nothing to sneeze at. Eventually, the house was bought and torn down, and Spriggs now is known as an infamous holdout in regards to what he did to try and keep the property. Number 3. The 360 Degree Highway In Guangzhou, China, if you go to a certain area, you're going to see a highway that is a near-perfect 360 degrees in how it encircles a group of houses. The property buyers were trying to make a highway to connect two major areas of the city, but a group of people refused to sell their houses. Three families, in fact, refused to sell. No matter what they were offered, they just wouldn't sell. They actually became known as the nail houses because their houses via the owners were nailed to the ground. The construction had to happen because plans were already in place for what came next. So they literally built a 360 degree highway that went all the way around their houses. The result is what you see when you go to the area. An important note is that while the houses are truly surrounded, they aren't blocked off. They still have access to the roads so they can enter and leave with ease. When aerial pictures of this were shown off on the internet, people joked about how these houses truly have a room with a view. Number 2. Sala Ujani You might think that it's just homeowners who refuse to sell their places, but that's not always the case. And Sala Ujani is a great example of that because he wasn't a regular homeowner, he was a shop owner. One who had worked in a little coffee shop in an old neighborhood of Roubaix in northern France for 46 years. He treasured that time, and he treasured his coffee shop. And when it became the last remaining house in the old neighborhood, he refused to sell it. I will not sell. I worked for it, this coffee house. They will not make me go. And I'm used to pressure, Ujani says. He went on to further cement his belief in what he was doing. I told them I will die here, he says. I don't need money. It goes too quickly. I will never move. This is my life here, and this will be my life. Why go elsewhere when it's better here? One of the more unique things about his particular building was that it was the only survivor of an air raid, which is appropriate because a different type of warfare has been waged on him and his house to try and get him to move. But nothing worked. Number 1. Macy's Let me take you back to the 1900s, when a man named Macy was going to open up his store on the legendary 34th Street in New York. He had everything he needed, except for a spot on the corner. A very important spot, you see. This one building was on the corner of 34th Street, and another buyer got the property to try and mess with Macy's plan to build his store there. Sadly for that guy, Macy still went through with it, and Macy's endures to this day. But in a weird twist, Macy's still doesn't own that corner of the building, though they've made the most of the situation via putting ads on the building, including the Macy's shopping bag sign that is now on the corner property, proclaiming Macy's as the world's largest store. Thanks for watching. What did you think of these stories of homeowners who wouldn't give up their homes no matter what? Which of these stories did you find the most surprising, or maybe the most shocking in terms of what they took? Would you be this stubborn with your home if push came to shove? Let me know in the comments below. Be sure to subscribe to World List, and I'll see you next time.